As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. This is Friday. And today we're wrapping up a brand new series I've been teaching, which is called Getting the Basics Right. It's five parts and it comes in multiple formats. The subtitle says, Biblical Guidelines for Money, for Relationships, for Prayer, and Dealing with Wayward Believers, Friends, or Loved Ones. And today is the last day that we're offering it because it's the end of the week. So please order yours today. You will love this. And it comes with a study guide so you can read all the information while you're seeing it or while you're hearing it. And today is also the last day this week that we're offering you my book called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. When I wrote this book, I did not realize how impacting it would be on me. But by the time I was finished studying all the signs that Jesus enumerated in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, I'm absolutely convinced we are right on the cusp of the coming of Jesus. It's right in front of us. My friends, he's nearly standing at the door and he gave us signs we would see to alert us to where we are prophetically in time. And today's the last day we're offering it this week on the program. So please order yours today. And you might as well order two or three because you will definitely want to share this with someone else. And please remember that when you become a partner with our ministry and a partner is anyone who regularly gives their finances into our ministry. You choose the amount that you want to give, but your commitment is then to help us take the teaching of the Bible to people all over the earth. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 19, go into all the world and teach all nations. That is not a suggestion. It is a divine commandment that we are to take the teaching of the Bible to all the nations of the world. And in verse 20, Jesus made a conditional promise to those who would either go with the gospel or those who would help others take it. He said, lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the age. The word lo in Greek is the word edu. It means, wow, wow, it is amazing. It is stunning that my power, my presence will be with you even to the end of the age. And it is a divine promise that God's power especially shows up in the lives of those who go or those who enable others to go. Maybe you can't go to the ends of the earth. But with your finances, you can help the message to go there. And so the promise in verse 20 belongs to you. It's to anyone who goes or to anyone who helps the message to go. Jesus says, wow, my power will really show up in your life. That is Jesus' promise to those who go and to those who help the message to go. Well, when you become a partner, you're helping the message to go. You become a partner in helping us teach all nations. There are people out there that don't have available to them what you have available to you. And they're crying out, God, please send me someone that can bring me teaching I can trust. That's our assignment. Pray for us that we'll do a good job. And together as partners, we can answer their prayerful cry by bringing them the teaching of the Bible. And the moment you become a partner with our ministry by giving regularly, into our ministry. And you can begin that today by going online or by giving us a call right now. But anyway, we're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone and Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. This is our way of welcoming every new partner into our family. We really want you to have these two books. But remember that we're also here to pray for you and we want to pray for you. We're waiting for the phone to ring or for your email to show up in our inbox and the moment we hear or read how we can pray for you, you can be guaranteed this is a ministry that will really pray. We know what it means to need people to pray for us. And when you reach out to us and say, please pray for me, you can be guaranteed we will really pray. But let us know how to pray for you by calling or by going online. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire strengthen and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. My friend, reach for your Bible, get something to write with, and get a piece of paper because today you're going to want to take notes 
But before we get into the new verse, I want us to go back to what we covered yesterday and begin looking at James chapter 5, verse 16, where the Bible says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Say amen. Then he gives us an example in verse 17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. That's pretty effective praying. Verse 18 says, Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Verse 19, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, verse 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. But let's begin again today in verse 16, where James says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He's talking about you, and he's talking about me. You might say, well, I don't feel very righteous. It has nothing to do with what you feel. It has to do with God imputing righteousness to you the moment you call Jesus the Lord of your life. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb, and now God sees you in Christ. He sees you through the blood of Jesus, and God has deemed you right, righteous, and approved. That's what the word righteous in this verse means, the Greek word dikaios. But look at the beginning of verse 16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. According to this verse, a righteous man can be effectual and fervent and powerful when he prays, and that means you. But what does the word effectual mean? In Greek, it is the word energeo, and maybe you hear a word. It's where we get the word energy. It depicts something that is energetic, something that is powerful, like a powerful force that is ready to be set into motion, something that is active and energetic, and it means when we as righteous people pray, powerful things are set into motion. The fervent prayer of a righteous man, and even the word prayer is so important because it is the Greek word deasis, a very specific word for prayer which depicts a request for a concrete, specific need, usually some type of physical or material need to be met. It is a request for a physical, tangible need to be met or even supplied. It is a concrete petition to meet a specific need that the person praying is facing in his life. And it tells us God wants us to be specific when we pray. General praying usually does not get specific results. If you want specific results, then you need to be specific when you pray. Be very clear in the petition that you pray and this word prayer, the Greek word deasis, describes a very clear, well-stated petition. Know what you ask and ask it very clearly. He says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. And again, the word righteous, the Greek word dikaios, one that's been judged right, righteous, one that is approved. And we're not approved because of our actions, but because of the blood of Jesus that washed us. And today we are in Christ. Say amen. But then he goes on to say that our prayers avail much. The Greek literally means our prayers have much ability or much strength. In fact, the word strength that is used here is from the Greek word iskuos. It describes a mighty man like a muscle builder whose arms are just strapping with muscles. Just one flex of the muscle, he can release so much power. And here the implication is when we pray in the name of Jesus, great power is released. Our prayers really avail much. Then he goes back to this example of Elijah in verse 17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Now, why did he add that? Because there's always someone, and it might be you, who says, oh, but I'm so up and down in my spiritual life. One day I'm on, one day I'm off, one day I'm up, one day I'm down. And now he says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And if you study the story of Elijah, it's pretty amazing that this great prophet of God one day was in faith, the next day out of faith, the next day he was up, the next day he was down. He was all over the place. He was a man subject to like passions as we are. The Greek literally says he had similar struggles as us. And yet he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. 
and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. I would call that pretty effective praying. Then verse 18 says, and then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Look at the effectiveness of this man's prayer, even though he may have deemed himself as being unstable. The fact is, as a righteous man, his prayers had great, great power, and so do yours. And this leads us into verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him. Let's begin with the word brethren. This word brethren appears in the book of James 16 times. That is amazing. He repeats this word 16 times, and all 16 times, it is the Greek word adelphos from the word delphos, which describes the womb of a woman. You put an A on the front, which is called a privative. It reverses the condition. It's someone born out of a womb, but because it is the word brother, it's two or more born out of the same womb. And James uses this word to describe fellow believers because we're all born of God. We're born out of the womb of God. It is a very endearing term to describe those of one's own family. And it was used later in a military sense to depict brothers in battle, comrades, camaraderie, hence brotherhood. And it's important that James uses this word 16 times in his epistle because he was the great legendary James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And believers have written to him from all the lands where they're scattered, seeking help, seeking advice. And rather than speaking down to them, James crawls into the trenches with them. They may be struggling, but they're still fighting. And therefore he calls them brethren. I'm proud to be your fellow soldier. We are comrades together. We are real brothers. And likewise, my friend, you may know someone that's struggling, but as long as they're still trying, you need to wrap your arms around them and say, I'm proud to be affiliated with someone like you. And that is why James uses this word adelphos, translated brother or brethren, 16 times in the book of James. And he says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, the word if in Greek is the word eon, and listen to what it means. It is the idea of a certain possibility. In all likelihood, it probably will happen. It is likely that each of us will know someone along the way who errs from the truth. The word err is a translation of the Greek word planeo. Listen to what it means. The word planeo is a word which was used by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, when Jesus was describing signs we would see just before he comes. And by the way, I cover this in my book, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Jesus gave this as the number one marker to let us know we've come to the end of the age. He said in Matthew 24, verse 4, he said, Beware lest any man deceive you. That word deceive is the same word here translated air, and listen to what it means. It describes a deception, a moral wandering. It depicts a person or even a society or nations that have veered from a solid path that they once regularly walked upon. As a result of veering morally, now this person or this society or these nations are adrift. They're adrift. They've lost their anchor. It was the very word used to describe an animal that lost its way and could not find its way back home. It means to morally lose one's bearings. And isn't it interesting that Jesus gave that as the first sign to alert us how close we are to the end of the age. He said, when it seems like individuals in society and even nations at large leave the moral path they once walked upon and begin to veer from it, and now they become at a drift, this is the primary sign you'll see to let you know you're coming right to the very end of the age. And my friends today, this sign is just all around us. It seems people have lost their minds. They are so morally confused and society at large all over the world is adrift. And the Apostle Paul prophesied that this would also take place in the church. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, latter times, the word latter in Greek here, the word who said us, when there's not much left, when you've come to the very end of the age, 
some shall depart from the faith. The word depart is a Greek word which doesn't mean to reject. It means to depart. Rejection is deliberate. It is blatant. You can do it right now. But a departure is different. A departure is something that takes place very slowly, one step at a time. Their position begins to change. And in fact, this transition can be taking place so slowly that the person that is in transition and is departing from the faith may not even realize that he is in transition. But he is. He's leaving a firmer form, a former very firm stand on the Word of God. He's opened his mind to other things that he's hearing, and he's beginning to be seduced in another direction. And that's what Paul writes in this verse. Some shall depart from the faith, not reject the faith, but very slowly, methodical, will depart from the faith, the faith. And in Greek, there's a definite article, which means this is the clear, sound teaching of doctrine and of Scripture. And why are they going to depart? It says, giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed, the Greek word pros echo. Pros means drawing near to. Echo means to embrace. They're releasing what they once held on to, turning in another direction to entertain new ideas. And Paul says, working behind these new ideas are seducing spirits. And this word seducing is now the same word which we see in James chapter 5, verse 19, where it is translated as the word error or error. And again, it depicts a deception, a moral wandering, a person who's veered from the solid path that he used to regularly walk upon. And as a result of veering morally, now he is adrift. He has lost his anchor. It was the very word used to describe an animal that got so far off track it never could find its way back home to morally lose one's bearings. And James says, if any of you do err from the truth. The word from is a Greek word, apo. It means from. It can be translated away from, but it implies putting distance between you and something else. These people have erred so far that now they're putting distance between themselves and what they used to believe. They don't want to talk about that anymore. They don't want to go to church anymore. They don't want to discuss that anymore. They may not want to be with you anymore. Apo, they put distance between themselves and the truth. And the truth has a definite article, which means it's talking about the truth as revealed in Scripture because they've opted now for something else. They are adrift. That's what the word error means. And by the way, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the same word planel here translated error or error is also translated delusion. It's delusional thinking. But he says, if you convert this person, you've done a good thing. And the word convert, the Greek word epi, strepho. The word epi means upon. The word strepho means to turn. When you compound the two words together, the word convert in this particular case describes a specific turning point, a specific turning point to turn around, to turn back, to return. If you cause this person who veered so off track to come back home, if there's a moment in their life when they wake up and realize what they've done and they come back, verse 20 says, let him, him who? The one who converted him. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. Wow, what a word to each of us. But notice the first of verse 20, let him know. The word know, a form of the Greek word ginosko, which means let him realize, let him realize, let him really understand or to fully comprehend, understand, realize, fully comprehend that he that converted the sinner from the error of his ways. And the word converteth, again, the Greek word epistrepho, it describes a specific turning point. And repentance always has a specific moment when a person changes and turns. He which converted in a specific moment the sinner from the error of his ways. He's talking about Christians that have veered, but in this particular verse, he calls them sinners. And the word sinner that is used here is the Greek word hamartolos, one who is habitually missing the mark, one who falls short of what God has stated and what God expects and what God approves. And he which converteth the sinner, the one missing the mark, 
from the error of his ways. And by the way, even the word from is so important because it is the word ek, which really carries the idea of deliverance. It means out of, out of the error of his ways. The word error, again, the Greek word planeo, which describes delusional thinking, a wandering. He's left the path that he once walked upon. But if you convert him from the error of his way, the word way, the Greek word hodas, it describes the road that he is currently walking upon. He's chosen a wrong road. But if you do something to bring him back and deliver him from that wrong walk, the verse says, you will save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. The word save is a form of the Greek word sozo. Maybe you've heard that word before. The word sozo means to save, but listen, it really means to heal. It also conveys the idea of wholeness or salvation, delivering and healing power that results in full wholeness, to deliver one from his enemies, to protect, to keep safe, to keep under protection, So when this verse says, you will save a soul from death, you will deliver him from the enemy that has stolen him, bring him back into a safe place where he's protected by the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will save him from death. (laughs) From death, in Greek says ek thanato, ek means out of, thanato from thanatos, which is the word for death. But here, it can depict physical or spiritual death or mortal danger or a dangerous circumstance, and it is the very word which was used by Greeks to describe a death sentence. That believer does not realize how precarious his life has become. He is living in a dangerous circumstance. Spiritually, he is mortally in danger. A death sentence has been passed against him. But if you can get that person to come back to the Word of God, you will save him and bring him into a position of safety and protection where he will not suffer death and shall hide a multitude of sin. The word hide from the Greek word kalupto, which means to conceal, to completely cover, to veil, to hide from view, multitude of sin in Greek means a great multitude, abundant sin. It doesn't matter what he had going on in his life before, If he repents and if he comes back to the Lord, it'll all be under the blood. And James says, you need to know what a great thing you've done if you're the instrument to bring that particular believer who's missing the mark back home. He says, brethren, know this, Ginosko, really understand, comprehend how powerful this is. I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Do you struggle to know the answers to basic questions that come up in life? In this five-part series, Getting the Basics Right, Rick Renner will share what you should do if you are financially not being compensated correctly, to keep yourself encouraged when you feel surrounded by discouragement, to live free from bitterness and stay out of the retribution and vengeance business, if you need to be anointed with oil because you're sick, to intercede for the deliverance of a friend or family member who has wandered spiritually. This series will equip you to get the basics right on vital, everyday issues and problems. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. This series contains essential information every believer should know. And today we're also offering you the book, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Scaring people with Bible prophecy should not be our goal. But God in His great love has chosen to inform us explicitly about the last days so that we can be prepared. In this book, Rick Renner gives the signs you'll see just before Jesus comes. You'll learn where we are on God's timetable, what specific signs we'll see to let us know we're coming to the end of the age, the final and ultimate sign that Jesus is about to come again, and so much more. This important and informative book can be yours for only $15. Don't delay ordering the five-part series, Getting the Basics Right, and the book, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and right now I'm standing in what's going to be the future studio for our television ministry in Moscow, Russia. Who would have ever believed that we would be broadcasting the Word of God from Moscow 
to the ends of the earth, that that's exactly what's happening. Romans 10, 18 says their words will go into all the world, their voice to the ends of the earth, and it's really happening. And my friends, we're constructing the studio. Look at it. The walls are starting to go up. And within just two weeks, this entire building will be standing with the roof, the doors, the windows, everything. And then the work begins on the interior. And I get so excited thinking that right where I'm standing is where I'm going to be seated looking into the camera to teach the Word of God to people all over the world who are crying out and who are saying, God, please send us someone with teaching that we can trust. I believe that's our assignment. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And I know our job is to feed many the Word of God. And we do it because of the anointing and because of your help as partners. Thank you for being part of the giving team that's making this come to pass. And if you're not already a part of the giving team, please, would you pray about joining us to help us make this dream become a reality? We're off to a good start. But we need to finish, and we need as many people as possible to participate. So I welcome you to our giving team, and I thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do. Most of us know someone that has erred from the faith, just like James described in James chapter 5. But there's something we can do for them. We can pray for them. And in James 5, 16, he said, the effectual fervent prayer of our righteous man avails much. Avails much in Greek means your prayers have great strength. They have great power. They have great ability. And when you pray, God moves. And if you need someone to pray with you, for somebody that you're concerned about, call us. We'll pray with you. We would be delighted to pray with you. Or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, we will stand in faith with you for the power of God to reach into the fires of destruction and snatch that person out and bring them back home again. We would love to pray with you. But hey, today is the last day of the week and the last day which we're offering you my series called Getting the Basics Right. It's five parts and it comes in multiple formats. The subtitle says Biblical Guidelines for Money, for Relationships, for prayer and dealing with wayward believers, friends, or loved ones. It is just jam-packed. It is such a blessing. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it. And it comes with a study guide. And today is the last day that we're offering you my book, which is called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. So order yours today by going online or by giving us a call. But let me pray for you right now. Father, you want to use each of us. Through our prayers, Lord, each of us can become a delivering force to reach into the fires of destruction, to grab hold of those believers and loved ones we know that have veered from the truth and bring them back home. Lord, help us to set powerful prayer into motion for their deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. I'll see you Monday. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.